Hello everyone and welcome to this week's lightweight Java game library 3D game tutorial and this week we're going to be programming a third person camera. Before we get started there are just a couple of very simple math concepts that we're going to be using this week and I'm sure most of you already know them but I'm just going to very quickly talk about them here. So the first concept, very simple, if you have two intersecting lines then this angle here is always going to be the same as this angle here and the same with the other two angles. And just quickly extending this concept, if you have two parallel lines and another line that intersects them both, then this angle is the same as this angle, like before, but they're also the same as this angle and this angle as well, because these two lines are parallel. And of course, that means that these other angles are all the same as each other too. The next concept is the basics of trigonometry, which we actually used last week, but I'll remind you of it here again. So if we have a right angled triangle with this angle theta and the longest side of the triangle, the hypotenuse, is of length h, then sine theta is equal to the length of the side opposite the angle divided by h, and cos theta is equal to the side next to or adjacent to the angle divided by h. And by multiplying both sides of these equations by h, we have these two equations for finding the lengths of sides a and b. So the length of the side opposite the angle will always be equal to the length of the hypotenuse multiplied by sine theta, and the length of the side adjacent to the angle will always be equal to the length of the hypotenuse multiplied by cos theta. And that is all the maths that we're going to be needing this week, so we can now get started with the camera. So the third person camera that we're going to be creating is going to always follow the player around like this, and it will always be pointing directly at the player. We're going to be programming that in so that it does it automatically, but there are also three things that the user can control about the camera. Firstly, you're going to be able to zoom the camera in and out whenever you want, like this, and this is done simply by altering the distance between the camera and the player. So at any time, no matter where the camera is, the user will always be able to control this distance, and we're going to be programming it so that scrolling the mouse wheel controls this distance. Also, the user can control how high or low the camera is, like this. If we have a look at what's going on from the side, we're basically just altering this angle here, which moves the camera up and down. And I'm going to be allowing this angle to be controlled by moving the mouse up and down while the right mouse button is pressed. And finally, the user can also move the camera around the player like this, so that you can see the player from different angles if you wish. If we look at this from above, you can see that this is done by simply changing this angle here, and we're going to be programming this angle to be controlled by moving the mouse left and right while the left mouse button is pressed. And those are the three things about the camera that the user can control. So let's get into the code and into the camera class, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take in the player object in the camera's constructor, because of course the camera's going to be following the player around, so it needs to have access to some of the player's information, such as position and rotation. Let's now set up those three variables that the user can control, the three variables that I was just talking about. So this first one, this is the distance of the camera from the player, that's the zoom, and I'm going to set that to 50 to start with. Then we've got the angle around the player, which I'll set to 0 to start with. Uh, and then the third one, the one that determines how high or low the camera is, that, as you can see here, is always going to be the exact same angle as the pitch, which we already have in the camera class, so we're just going to be using the pitch variable to alter how high or low the camera is. Let's now create three methods, one for each of these variables, and these methods are going to check the user inputs and then alter the variables accordingly. So the first one is going to be to check the inputs for the zoom variable, so we're going to check how much the user moves the mouse wheel, and we can do that by doing mouse.getdwheel, and that will return quite a large number actually compared to how much you turn it. So I'm going to multiply that by 0.1 so that it doesn't zoom out and in too quickly. And then I'm going to actually decrease the distance of the camera from the player by this zoom level. And that's because I like to zoom out when I'm moving the mouse wheel down instead of the other way around. But if you want to do it the other way around, then you can just use plus equals instead of minus equals. So let's create the next method. And this is going to be to calculate the pitch. And as I said, this is going to happen when the user has pressed the right mouse button. So we can check if the mouse button is pressed by doing mouse is button down, and then 0 is the left mouse button, and 1 is the right mouse button. So I'm going to check for 1. 
And if the right mouse button is pressed, then I'm going to find out how much the mouse has moved up and down by doing get dy, mouse.getDY. That's also quite a large number, so I'll multiply that by 0 0.1 to make the mouse less sensitive. And then I'm going to subtract that from the pitch, because I quite like the pitch to increase when I move the mouse down. But if you want it the other way around, again, just use plus equals. Then the last one, to calculate how much the camera should move around the player. Again, we're going to check if the left mouse button is down, so this time we're going to check for is button down 0, because 0 is the left mouse button, 1 is the right mouse button. Then we're going to check how much the mouse has moved left and right by doing mouse.getDX, and that's not quite such a big number, I find, so I multiply that by 0 0.3, but you can mess that around with that to get whatever sensitivity you'd like. And then I'm going to subtract that from the angle around player. And then we're going to go into the move method and we're just going to call all three of those methods in the move method. So now that we have all these variables and they can all be controlled by the user's input, we have all the information needed to calculate what the camera's position and rotation should be. To help us do this, we're first going to calculate two distances the camera's vertical distance from the player, and the camera's horizontal distance from the player. So, we know this distance here because it's controlled by the user, and we know this angle here because that is also controlled by the user. So, using the trigonometry that I showed you earlier, we can very easily calculate the horizontal and vertical distance of the camera from the player, like this. So let's now go into the code and do those two calculations. I'll create a method for each one, so these methods are going to return a float, which is going to be the calculated distance. So this one's going to calculate the horizontal distance, and as I said, that's just the distance from player multiplied by cos, and then we always have to convert to radians when we're doing math.cos or math.sign, and then we put in the angle of the pitch, and that's going to need to be casted to a float. Then I'm just going to copy and paste that for the calculate vertical distance method, and the only difference here is that it's using math.sign. And then in the move method, we're going to call both of these methods, and we're going to store the horizontal and vertical distances in two floats. So I've created a float here called horizontal distance, and I've set that to calculate horizontal distance, and I'm going to do the same here for the float here called vertical distance. Let's now add another method, and this method is going to calculate the actual position of the camera, the actual x, y, and z position of the camera. So I'm going to call this calculate camera position, and this is going to take in those two distances that we just calculated, the horizontal distance and the vertical distance of the camera from the player. And we can already calculate the Y position of the camera because we know how far the camera is away from the player in the vertical distance, and we know the player's Y position. So if we just add the two together, we will get the Y position of the camera. Let's now have another look at what's going on from above the scene. So the final thing that we need to calculate to get the camera's position is its X offset and Z offset from the player. If we know these distances, then we can calculate the camera's X and Z position. But first, I just want to point out the axes in the top left corner there, and note how the Z axis is pointing downwards. If you imagine the axes normally, you have the X axis pointing to the right, the Y axis pointing up, and the Z axis pointing out towards us. So if you imagine looking at that from above, it would look like this, with the Y axis pointing straight out of the screen towards you. So that's why the z-axis is pointing downwards when we look at the scene from above. So, we have our player looking in a certain direction, which is determined by the player's y-rotation, which is this angle here. And we want the camera to always follow behind the player, so the camera will be somewhere like here. And we know this distance because we just calculated it. It's the camera's horizontal distance from the player, which I'll mark with an h. Also, we know that this angle here is the same as this angle here because of that first maths concept that I showed you earlier, so this angle must also be equal to the player's Y rotation. But let's not forget that the camera doesn't always have to be directly behind the player. The user can move the camera around the player by altering the angle around player variable, 
So this total angle is now equal to the player's Y rotation plus the angle around player variable. And I'll just call this total angle theta. And now we have everything we need to calculate the camera's X offset and Z offset from the player. We've once again got a right angled triangle. So the length of the side opposite the angle is H multiplied by sine theta. And the length of the side adjacent to the angle is, as always, the length of the hypotenuse, or H, multiplied by cos theta. And don't forget that theta was equal to the player's Y rotation plus the camera's angle around player and H represents the camera's horizontal distance from the player. So let's go back into the code and do these calculations in the calculate camera position method. So let's calculate the angle theta and as I just showed that is equal to the player's Y rotation plus the angle around player variable. Then to calculate the X offset of the camera from the player as you just saw, that is equal to the horizontal distance multiplied by sine theta. And of course, theta has to be in radians, so we convert to radians. And this is going to need to be cast to a float. And then to calculate the Z offset of the camera from the player, it's exactly the same, except this time it's math.cos theta. And now we just have to uh, we actually have to take these away from the player's X and Z position. So the position of the camera, the X position of the camera is the player's X position minus offset X, and I'll show you why that is in a minute. And the same with the Z position, it's the player's Z position minus the offset Z. And I'll show you why we are minusing these in uh, a minute. But let's quickly just call this method in the move method. And of course it takes in the horizontal and the vertical distances. So why did we subtract the offsets from the player's position instead of adding them? Well if you look here the camera's X offset from the player's position is in the negative X direction and the camera's Z offset from the player is also in the negative Z direction. Let's now go into the main game loop and test out what we've done so far. So we need to move the creation of the camera down a bit to underneath where we create the player. And then we put the player in into the camera's constructor and we can run that. And let's test that out. So if we move around, the camera follows the player. We can zoom in and out. That's fine. The pitch works fine. But if we rotate the camera around the player, you'll see that the camera doesn't quite face in the right direction. It always faces straight forwards. And that's because we never change the your value. So let's have a look at how we can calculate the camera's yaw, which for the way we've got it set up is this angle here. So we know that this angle here is the camera's angle around player. This angle is the player's Y rotation. And so this angle is also equal to the player's Y rotation, meaning that this total angle, which I'll call theta, is equal to the player's Y rotation plus the angle around player. Nothing that we haven't done already. Then using what we know about angles in parallel lines, we know that this angle here must also equal theta. So the your angle is therefore equal to this whole angle, which is obviously 180 degrees, minus theta. So the your equals 180 degrees minus theta, which was the player's Y rotation plus the camera's angle around player. So let's go and put this final bit of code into the camera class, into the move method. So we're calculating the your and that is equal to 180 degrees minus the player's Y rotation plus the angle around player. And if we go ahead and run that, it should all be working now. So as you can see here, you can rotate the camera around the player. And when the player rotates, the camera rotates properly as well. So everything is now working as you would expect. So that is the very basics of a third person camera and now you can have a go at altering it and changing it to your liking. For example, you'll probably want to limit the amount you can zoom in and out. You might also want to limit the pitch so that you can't rotate right over the player or into the ground. And maybe you want to add an offset to the camera's Y position so that it centers on the player's body instead of the feet. There's so much that you can do with it so have a go with that, play around with it and see what you can achieve. But that is it for this week. There wasn't a devlog video yesterday, but there will be one next week if you're waiting for that. And you can catch up on last week's updates to my game by clicking on the link on the screen now. 
Don't forget to keep in touch via my Facebook, Twitter and Instagram pages. Links are in the description below. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have an awesome week and I will see you all next time.